Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another first impressions video, this time for Eleanor of Aquitaine. So as I've been doing these for most of the Gathering Storm leaders, once again my usual disclaimer of this is not going to be a super in-depth analysis, it's going to be a very quick look in my, my generally first impressions of, uh, of the new leaders that was announced. So Eleanor of Aquitaine was just announced, you know, a few minutes ago. And also before anyone asked, no, I don't have pre-release access, so I'm not cheating and I'm not, I'm not, you know, experiencing the leader outside of the first look video. The first look video is all the information that I have on the leader. Um, but Eleanor of Aquitaine is quite interesting because she leads both France and England in Civilization VI, so you're able to play as her for either one of those civilizations. Um, this does mean that there's very little information that we can actually go over today because most of her things are just, you know, corresponding to either France or England. Um, one of the coolest things about Eleanor, though, is that her character model actually changes based on who you play her with. So this one right here is what she looks like when you're playing England. And let me find the other one. So you can see that's what she looks like when you're uh, playing France, and this is what she looks like if you're playing England. So I think that's just a nice touch because I guess historically she must have been leading those two nations at different times. So it's just a, it's a very nice thing that they threw that in because I think it looks pretty good. Um, but Eleanor's uh, leader ability is known as Court of Love, and it makes it so that great works in her cities cause minus one loyalty per turn in foreign cities within nine tiles, and additionally, a city that leaves another civilization due to a loss of loyalty and is currently receiving the most loyalty per turn from Eleanor's civilization skips the free uh, city step to join the civilization. So that's a very big mouthful, and I can, I, I, I'll just go ahead and show you what, uh, pretty much what that means here. Let me go, let me find where the clip is in here. So right here you can see normally Frankfurt is losing loyalty and normally it would skip to being a free city, it would be a free city for 10 turns and then it would switch to Eleanor cities. But you can see instead of going to free city it just immediately becomes one of Eleanor cities. So that that's what that second part of that ability does. Um, as far as what I think of this ability, I think it's a very interesting ability. I think it's definitely very cool. Um, because that's, I, I've been really wanting to do some, you know, some offensive loyalty stuff in a game of Civ 6, because I think that's a mechanic that could be really fun to play with, but you really can't play it at all in the current version of the game. There's really no way to do it, but I guess with Eleanor, she is the one exception to that, and you can actually fight a, you know, an, an, an offensive loyalty game. You can expand your empire by using loyalty only without even having to go militaristic. Um, as far as the actual ability itself, minus one loyalty per turn um, for each great work and all cities within nine tiles. I think that this is going to be pretty good. Um, more so in the late game than the early game. If, if your cities are clustered together and someone settles near you, um, so say that you have like maybe your capital and maybe one or two other cities that are on the border of your empire and you fill those cities up with great works, you could cause a significant amount of negative loyalty um, to surrounding cities that try to settle near you. So that is something that actually could be kind of interesting and I think that actually could be pretty good. Early on though, this is going to be this is going to be absolutely useless. Pretty much this entire ability is going to be totally useless in the early game because you're not going to have any great works. And maybe you can use this um, this this loyalty thing to get a, like a, an extra city a few turns earlier. But aside from that, this really just does nothing in the early game, which really does suck. But late game, I think it is going to be okay. It's going to be very difficult to use effectively, I think. You're going to have to plan ahead to make sure that you have your great work slots on the edge of your empire to get that negative one loyalty um, applied to other people. And if you're able to do that, then I think it will be pretty strong. I believe they showed later on here that she actually took a capital um, with... Okay, yeah, so you can see like this. like She has um, these two big cities right here that probably are filled with great works. Um, which then get the loyalty applied, and then as she just keeps expanding, you can see she's ev she's eventually able to get enough uh, loyalty to actually flip a capital because she has a city there, there, and another one there. So assuming that these are all you know filled with some great works, then the amount of negative loyalty that you can get in foreign cities is very very strong. You can see like this city out here though, it's a little bit farther away and it's still at full loyalty, which is rather unfortunate. It looks like this one up here is losing loyalty though. Um, so it does appear to be uh, like capable of producing quite a strong amount of negative loyalty. Um, I believe if you hit negative 20, I, I'm pretty sure that that would mean that pretty much everybody's going to rebel just all the time maybe? I don't know. Um, I forget exactly how positive loyalty works in correlation with negative loyalty. I know you can't go more than negative 20, um, and you also can't go more than positive 20, but I don't know if like you're, you're able to 
technically exert like negative 40 and have positive i don't know like 36 so that way it would yeah it would come out to negative four i don't know if that's how it works or if it, or if it is actually just that there's a cap on both negative and positive so that it would just even out to zero that's one of those things i'm just not sure about mechanically um i'm sure i could probably test it but it would take a good while and i really don't feel like um, putting in that much effort just to find that out i'd, I'd rather just wait until eleanor comes out and i can play her um, but as far as using her on either France or England, I definitely think that she's going to be better on France than she is England. Um, simply because with France, uh, so if you play Eleanor with France, then obviously you're going to get her, uh, her, her her usual chateau, you're going to get the Guard Imperial, and you're going to get the ability that gives her additional production towards Wonders and double tourism from Wonders. And I think that that fits in a lot better with Eleanor's ability than the England bonuses do. Um, because right now, because you know this this is definitely a culturally focused wonder or wonder uh, leader ability, so you're probably gonna want to go culture with Eleanor. And because of that reason, I think that it just kind of meshes a lot better with France. Uh, keep in mind that England's abilities have changed. So England's um, new um, ability is known as hang on, let me pull it up here. So England's new ability is known as Workshop of the World, and it makes it so that um, she will accumulate one more uh, of, of iron and coal per turn. She gets double production towards military engineers, and military engineers receive plus two charges. And also her powered buildings will, uh, will receive um, plus, two, uh, plus two of their respective yield when powered. So that's a, I mean, I think that's a good improvement for England, but at the same time, I also think that really it doesn't really work well with the rest of the stuff that Eleanor does, because that's just kind of... I don't know. It's kind of just a very strange thing. I I can't remember. I want to say that the uh, that the archaeological museum is also getting replaced, but I can't remember for certain if I actually heard that or not, or maybe I'm just making that up and thinking crazy or something like that. But nonetheless, I definitely think that Eleanor is going to work a lot better with France than England, just because she's a bit culturally focused. You'll probably have a lot more great works if you're playing um, for France, so I think that is nice. If you are going England, I think England's going to be a fairly more focused domination sieve now, so I guess this could work kind of for domination, but you still are going to have to play a culture game, and that's just kind of a weird combo to go, is culture and domination. It's something that doesn't really work well. Science and domination is almost pretty much 100% better than culture and domination. Uh, so for that reason, I definitely think she's going to be better on France, but you know, your mileage va may vary, and maybe whenever I, you know, actually get to play her, um, my opinions will change. But um, um, as far as my overall estimated rating for her it goes, um, I'm going to say that she's probably going to be about C tier. I think that this ability is cool, and I think it's very fun. I don't think it's going to be very, it's not going to be overly strong, you know, it gives you it gives you no help in the early game. Um, it's going to take a, quite a bit of skill to use, I feel. Maybe maybe I could be wrong, and maybe, you know, the radius is, is in practice going to be, it's going to feel bigger than what I think it is, and that, you know, the effect will actually spread to a lot more cities than I think it will. Um, but I think that this is going to be a very highly skill-based ability, and if you're able to use it right, I think it is really strong. But I think it is going to be hard to use, um, and once again, you know, the fact that it doesn't help you out in the early game definitely sucks, especially if you're playing on higher difficulties. And um, aside from that, neither France nor England have particularly strong bonuses towards things. Um, their, their, their civilization abilities aren't necessarily bad, but they're not also outstanding. They don't really point them towards the victories all that well. I mean, France is definitely a little bit better, as I've mentioned, with the cultural specialization, but England especially isn't really pointed towards a victory, and this ability doesn't really point towards a victory either, so for that reason, I think that she's probably going to be about average, probably either C or D tier. Um, I'm more inclined to say C than D, but you never know. I mean, maybe maybe things could change. Uh, so preliminarily, I will say that she is going to be C tier. So sorry that this was a short one, but there really isn't that much to talk about with Eleanor of Aquitaine, um, but thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.